Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to be going over an older tutorial uh, that I did all about how to create line art style animations in Cinema 4D uh, using Sketch and Tune. And this one is more for the uh, guys who have Cinema 4D uh, Lite version. And you have Cinema 4D Lite if you have After Effects CC or CC 2014. It comes with it free, so you can't beat that. Uh, but the thing is, is that Cinema 4D Lite is pretty limited, but it is it can do a lot of stuff. And I figured out how to do the line art style without Sketch and Tune and using only the native tools inside of Cinema 4D Lite. So there you go. It's free and you can use it and we can recreate this line art style, have this nice 3D depth and stuff. Everything that I did with, uh, basically everything I did with Sketch and Tune, it's still... Uh, limited, not as powerful as Sketch and Tune, which you'll see in this tutorial. I'll go over some of the limitations that you have, and it's a little bit more work than just applying a Sketch and Tune style onto everything, uh, but we can get pretty dang close. And uh, like I said, you can't beat uh, free Cinema 4D Lite, so hopefully this will uh, help you understand Cinema 4D a little bit more uh, and understand all the tools that are included, because there is a lot there. There's a lot in Cinema 4D Lite. Uh, so I'm going to be going over how to, uh, number one, uh, prepare your files uh, for this uh, technique using uh, Cinema 4D Lite. We're going to have two separate files. We're going to have one that's just the base colors, so it's going to have all of our flat colors, and then we're going to have a uh, basically a copy of that Cinema 4D file that we're going to apply all the line uh, edge treatments to it. And then we're going to go into After Effects, and using Cineware, we're going to composite those two uh Cinema 4D files together and create our line art and then finish it off in After Effects do some you know final compositing color stuff and then just render it out and this is all using uh, Cinema 4D Lite, Cineware and After Effects CC so for all the guys out there who are using After Effects and might be new to these tutorials welcome to the Cinema 4D community hopefully uh, this will interest you more in exploring uh, stuff in Cinema 4D and seeing how it can work in your uh, After Effects workflow. So enough of me jibber-jabbering, let's go into the tutorial. Alright, so here we are in Cinema 4D Lite and I have my turntable animation here all set up. And the workflow I'm going to go with to create line art is I'm going to have this composition with just flat colors. And I'm getting the flat colors by creating a bunch of materials with different colors and placing them in the luminance channel. Now what you do, but what happens when you put an object or colors in the luminance channel, if it's 100% brightness, it's just going to be flat color. So you can see if I actually add a color channel, that actually gets some shading now. But we don't want any shading at all, we just want flat colors and then outlines. So once you animate your object, you're going to apply the flat color to all the objects here. And then you're going to create a duplicate of this, uh, of your line art composition, or of, of your 3D object. And that is the separate composition that we'll apply lines to. So I have turntable lines. And that is what I'll apply all these uh, lines to. But you'll notice that uh, most line art is very geometric, which is perfect because it falls into line with... Uh, a lot of what Cinema 4D Lite is capable of, and that is creating just simple 3D shapes. You can get more complex by using some of these modeling tools here, uh, but for the most part, line art is just created with uh, just a bunch of geometric shapes. So this turntable is just a bunch of spheres, or just a bunch of cylinders, cubes, We've got a bunch of cubes here, some cylinders here, uh, and then some discs. Uh, you know, a disc for the record player, all that good stuff. And I also have some splines here uh, that I'll get into uh, showing you how you can actually get these nice defined grooves as well as this little uh, singular uh, spline here for the little slider. So I'm going to go through all that stuff of how to create outlines on all of these basic geometric shapes. So that's going to be the name of the game is uh, creating outlines without having uh, Sketch and Tune available to us because that is not in Cinema 4D Lite. That's in the full version. Uh, but we can still do a lot with uh, Cinema 4D Lite. So let's just jump into uh, this little composition here that just has a bunch of geometric shapes. So I have this in hidden line mode so you actually can see all the edges. So I have a cylinder, sphere, a disc, and this is just my record basically with all of my arcs, all those grooves for the actual record, and a pyramid. 
So we're gonna, it's a two step process to get all of the lines and I'll show you why. Uh, so the first way we're gonna get some of our edges is by using something called a uh, cell renderer. And that's in the effects menu. And it's actually really, it's really cool that this is included because basically what you can do with it is create outlines and apply outlines to all the objects in your scene. But you'll notice one thing is that you get the outlines but you're losing these inner edges of say our cube, our cylinder here, you don't see that edge, and you're losing that edge in the pyramid as well. Now you'd think that, all right, well, you'll just turn on edges and solve all those issues, but the thing is is that the edge mode is perfect for, uh, you know, wireframe renders because you get all the edges of all your polygons, but it's not very good when you're trying to do line art because you're getting all, of, not only are you, yeah, you're getting the definition of that inner edges, especially for cubes, those look perfect, but if you have any cylindrical objects, you're getting all these other polygons in there. So, if we jump back to my original uh, turntable color, if I go into my cell renderer, turn on edges, you'll see that this just looks a mess. Like, we can't use that, that's not line art, that's just a wireframe. So, but cell renderer will get us part of the way there. So we're gonna use cell renderer along with another uh, feature another uh, another feature in Cinema 4D light uh, to create all of our edges, uh, but we're not we're not done with cell renderer yet. What we're gonna do is create on our uh, separate line uh, project file, our Cinema 4D project file. So like I said, we're gonna have our main color and then a separate file with just our lines. We're just gonna have a so this is like the finished thing. What we're going to create is just a black and white image with our lines in it. So what I want to do first is just create a black luminant material. So all of our objects are shaded black. I'm just going to apply this onto all the objects in my scene. And then I'm just going to enable color so the color will actually show up. And then I actually need to change the edge color to white so that'll show up. So now we have a black and white uh, image and I'll turn that off. And then what we're going to do is you combine this edge uh, version of uh, the turntable scene with the color version of the turntable and then just use blending modes and After Effects to composite those lines on top of the uh, color version. So that's, that's a little bit of the workflow. But we need to get our edges here. So this method I'm going to show you for uh, cylindrical objects. Uh, and we're not going to use, to get cylinders, we're not going to use a cylinder object. To get cylinders and to maintain this edge, what we're going to do is use a extrude object. And then we're going to use a circle. So this is going to be how we're creating our cylindrical object. So I'm going to place the circle underneath the extrude, and then just, uh, you can increase the radius here, and we just have a flat disk or a just very skinny cylinder. So I'm just going to move this over near our other uh, cylinder here. And I'm going to increase the uh, extrude here. And the nice thing about using the extrude is if I render now with the cell renderer, you can see we get this little edge back because we made it with an extrude. Now I'm going to apply this black material to that extrude, hit render, and you'll see that I can now rotate this object and I have a 3D cylinder with that inner edge showing up. So that is perfect. That's what we need to create some of the little elements like uh, this little turntable uh, arm uh, rotate handle or these little buttons right down here. So this is perfect. So using extrudes instead of cylinders, that's a very key thing. So I'll just name this uh, cylinder and then what I'm gonna do is duplicate this and not only can you create cylinders but in the circle options here, the circle spline options, we have the ability to create an ellipse so you can actually get different uh, sizes of, so you can actually get different sizes of uh, cylinders and you know squash it and all that stuff and you can also get a ring. So now we have this hollowed out cylinder which also comes in handy with certain elements of uh, line art as well. So I made like a Polaroid camera. This is perfect for like the lens 
or the outer ring of a lens. And again, when you hit render, you get the inner and outer edge of that ring. So this is very handy when creating line art is to use these uh, extrude objects and not just cylinders because you lose the inside edges. So extrudes actually maintain uh, edges when you uh, use an extrude and a spline shape. So you can also you know, use all these other objects. So say you want to do a star maybe. Let's just shrink this down, move this forward, and then just create an extrude. Apply black material on that. You see that we don't actually get these inner edges, so this doesn't work for everything. And you'll notice that I'll do the same thing with a rectangle and try to get like a cube. And we'll make that a child. And if I render, you'll see that if I put a black material on that, we get the, uh, the cap edges, but not the uh, other edges here. So, Semel Renderer gets us part of the way there by using extrude objects for cylinders. We got our inner edges of our cylinders, but we still are missing the inner edges of our uh, pyramid our cube and also these little accent grooves here. And we're gonna use a different thing called proximity shader to get these edges back. So I'm gonna jump into another composition here to demonstrate what a proximity shader does. And like the name suggests, a proximal shader has to do with proximity of objects. So I'm gonna create a cube in a sphere and what I'm going to do is kind of place them close together so they're close proximity to each other. And I'm going to double click in the Material Manager, turn off Color and Reflectance, and I'm going to use Luminance on this as well uh, because I want everything to be flat. And I'm going to go to Effects and choose Proximal. So if we go into our Proximal Shader options here, you'll see we have this Object Field and we also have this like uh, Circular Gradient and all these options here. But right now, I'm just going to demonstrate what a proximal shader at its very base level does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the proximal material. Let me rename this to proximal. And then apply this to our cube. So what this is going to do is, def depending on what objects are defined, we can actually have objects shade other objects based on the proximity of that object to the other object. So what we're going to do is use this sphere to shade our cube based on the sphere's proximity to our cube. So if I hit render, let me actually turn off cell renderer here. I had cell renderer on. If I hit render, you'll see that we have this shading on our cube that is this circular gradient. And that is just driven by that sphere's proximity to the cube. So you can see that the further away our sphere is, we don't get any shading. But we also have this end distance. If we crank this up, now notice this, this didn't show up before. If I hit render, by increasing that end distance, that is actually expanding the proxim proximity distance that this actually shades the cube. So I can move this sphere fairly far away, but if I crank up that distance, we can actually still shade that cube even though it's far away by using this end distance. So I'm gonna bring this back down to 100. I'm just gonna move this cube or the sphere closer and you can see how this is working. So I can actually increase the size of this uh, sphere here. There we go. So we actually have uh, it being shaded. So that is basically what the proximal shader at the base level does. But the cool thing is, is that we can actually have an object shade another object by using the edges of an object. So we're going to get rid of the sphere and we're going to take the same basic uh, idea of shading things based on proximity and what we're going to do is use a cube to shade itself on its edges by using the edges of this object. Now this isn't going to work right away because we're using a parametric object and a parametric object technically doesn't have any edges until it's made editable. So to get this to work with edge mode, we need to make our objects editable. 
So now we have some edges here. And what the proximal shader is going to do is use these edges to shade itself. Since we have the proximal ob uh, material on the cube and we're using the cube to shade, if I hit render, you'll see that we actually have some shading. And right now you can't really tell what's going on. But again, if I adjust this distance of how much the proximity distance is that's shading in render, you can see what's going on. If I bring this down to say 2% and hit render, we have these nice edges or these nice strokes around our edges. And this is due to just using the edge mode in the proximity shader. And you can almost think of this dot as the stroke uh, width. So if I have this a very, uh, if I make this a very small uh, dot, that is basically the stroke width on our edges there. And this is a very thick uh, stroke. So I'm going to do a distance of one in render. And you can see that if I zoom in really close, though, we have these kind of soft edges. And we can get rid of that and make this a more solid uh, line or stroke by increasing the intensity. So if I bring that up to 350 and hit render, you can see that kind of uh, hardens everything. And you can even go even further than that and get an even sharper edge. So if I zoom out, we have a very nice sharp uh, edge there. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. And the name of the game here is uh, using proximal shader in conjunction with cell renderer to get all of our edges. Now, if you have multiple objects, which of course you are going to have multiple objects in your scene, so let's just use uh, use another cube, and I just scaled it down. So I have uh, the proximal shader material applied to this cube, but you'll notice if I hit render, it's not showing up. And the key thing is that not only when you have another object in the scene do you have to make sure that A, you have the proximal material applied to the object, but you also need to have that object included in the object list in that material. So now by placing that cube into the object field, that is now showing up uh, in the proximal uh, shader material and it's being uh, an edge is being applied to that object. So you can have a bunch of objects in here uh, and that'll create your edge. So you'll notice in my lines turntable scene here, I have my proximal shader and I have, let's see, here's my lines. I have a whole bunch of objects in here that I'm just using edges for. So another, so let's actually just go ahead and recreate that proximal shader. Let's go into effects, proximal. Uh, we're going to use edges, so we're also we're going to use the pyramid. Remember, we need to make it editable, so it recognizes those edges. And then we have our box here. So I'm going to place both of those objects in the box. I'm also going to you can also include uh, sub objects and also exclude parents. So you can keep. I mean, those those are really handy options there as well. Uh, and distance again. I'm going to keep to one. Bring up the intensity just like we did in the other scene. And then what we can do is hit render and you'll notice that's not going to work because we haven't applied that material, this proximal material, to our objects yet. So I'm going to apply this to the box. So there's proximal and then there's the pyramid and I'll replace that black material with the proximal, hit render, and there are our edges. But you'll notice that our proximal lines are a bit thicker than our cell renderer line. So what we want to do is keep the thickness of our proximal edges in our uh, cell renderer edges consistent so they kind of blend together. And then you don't have to worry about the thickness in, cell re uh, in Cinema 4D because we can actually f uh, use After Effects to thicken our edges uh, by using some effects over there. Uh, but the unfortunate thing about cell render is there's no option to uh, adjust the thickness of those edges. So, But that's fine because again we're going to go into After Effects and we can increase the thickness there. But while we're in Cinema 4D we need to make sure that these edges kind of uh, match up. Uh, and I, I think if we use a value of like 0.5 those kind of match uh, a little bit better. Maybe 0.2. 
I think those that looks pretty consistent now with the edges on the cell render and the edges on our uh, proximal here. Okay, so that is using the edge uh, mode on proximal shader, but we also have these vertices, uh, this use vertices option as well. And this, using the vertices, is going to help us with the uh, little splines here. Now we're going to use the proximal shader uh, not for the edges, but with these splines proximities, with the, the spl uh, splines vertices proximity to this disk or the record. So I'm going to duplicate this proximal shader and let's actually rename this first one to uh, edges and then I'll name this second one to vertices and then I'm going to just delete the objects in the objects field and what I'm gonna do let me just put this down here what I'm gonna do is then apply this proximal material this new one we made and apply it to the record and then what I'm gonna do is bring this record into the objects field and we want to include the sub object, sub object, so those are all of our arcs. And if we hit render, we actually need to uh, use vertices, so not edges, but vertices. And if I hit render, you can see that we get these dots. And if I actually move these, actually our problem is our uh, end distance too small. So let's increase this to one, and now you can really see our dots showing up. Now what are these dots? So when you use vertices, it actually creates dots where each vertices is. And the vertices are determined, the no, um, amount of vertices are determined on splines by this intermediate point setting. So the angle is 5% right now, but if I bring this up per fairly high, you can see that that is losing or degrading the uh, smoothness of our arc splines here. And if I hit render, you'll see that everywhere there is like that little chunk, that little segment of our spline, there is a vertices. So that is how the vertices uh, option on the proximal shader works. So what we're going to do is actually bring up uh, the angle fairly low so it's a very high quality line. And if I hit render, since it creates a dot almost every angle uh, change in that spline, we are getting uh, this line, this nice straight line that's just created by a bunch of those dots. You can see if it's too high, we have too few dots because those are uh, the angle is too high. We need to bring that threshold all the way down to zero. We get this nice straight line. And this is due to the proximity of these uh, vertices of the spline to the disk. Now you'll notice if I bring this up, we're losing uh, the actual uh, lines here because the objects, the splines, aren't close enough proximity to the disk. So there we go. We need those splines to be right on top of the disk and that'll actually show up with the proximal shader. Okay, so what if we have uh, just a straight line Say we have, let's just draw on top of our disk here. So there's a straight spline, and let's make sure that's right on top of our disk here. And if we go and apply that spline to our object list here, you can see that that shows up right there and that is only because we have two points, so two vertices. To increase the uh, number of vertices, we need to actually change this from adaptive to uniform and increase the number. And you'll see that by increasing the number, we're now getting a bunch of more points, more vertices along that single spline to create our line. So that is how I created uh, the line Whoop, let's go back here. The line uh, right here on the little slider guy here. So that's just a spline. 
and then you just need to change it to uniform and crank up the numbers and that's how I created the uh, line and that is due again to the proximity of it to another object if I just had a spline out here floating in the middle of space and I wanted this to show up in a render what I'd have to do is uh, do a sweep and sweep a very small circle onto it so I'm sweeping the circle uh, I'm sweeping uh, the circle whoop, along the spline so I need to make this a little shorter there we go so there's my circle I need to make this just very small and if I hit render there I get my my spline in there due to giving it some thickness so it has some edges and you can position this any way you want and there you go that's how you can render splines that are just kind of floating in space and I can add different points to this and that'll still render since it's just swept with a very small uh, circle to create some geometry and that is being uh, driven by the cell renderer instead of the proximal shader alright so I showed you how to create cylinders uh, with extrude objects to create your edges I showed you how to create uh, hollowed out cylinders again with the uh, cell renderer to uh, with extruded objects to get the edges I showed you also how to use an, uh, a sweep object to get splines to show up uh, in your render using cell renderer and then I also showed you how to create these inner edges by using a proximal shader set to edge mode here so using edges uh, you can also include sub objects as well and I also showed you how you can use proximal shader that uses vertices to uh, to create these little grooves by using the proximity of splines so these little arc splines to the disk to create uh, the little grooves on the turntable so now that we know how to create all of the edges on objects we can basically apply what we just learned and apply that to all of these objects so if I go to hidden line here we have all of these objects which are basically cubes cylinders uh, uh, discs and splines and you can see that I applied uh, the proximal shader with a whole bunch of the objects in this main scene hit render and I have all of my outlines on all of my objects here so it's as easy as that is once you learn how to create edges using proximal shader using cell renderer you can then uh, isolate individual uh, 3D objects in your scene and apply either the cell renderer which is just applied to the entire scene or apply a, a proximal shader either edge mode or uh, vertices mode and that's how you get all of your edges so once you have all of your edges in your uh, line version you save it and then we bring in both of our uh, Cinema 4D files into After Effects and then we can start compositing. So now we can actually just start, uh, we can just jump into After Effects and do just that. Alright, so we're now in After Effects and we just imported our two Cinema 4D files. So remember we have the, uh, the Cinema 4D file with just a flat color and then we have the same file uh, that's a duplicate of that color file but then we just replace all the color with our cell renderer and our proximal shaders to create our outlines of all of our geometry so then what you'll do is you'll create a composition like I did here and I'm gonna put the uh, turntable lines on top of the turntable color layer and you automatically have a Cineware layer applied to your Cinema 4D files once you bring them into a composition uh, and then you can actually go to the effects and start messing around with these Cineware layers. So Cineware is really cool. You can bring in uh, exactly what you see in your Cinema 4D viewport and see it inside of After Effects, which is really handy. <clears throat> and you can actually do some compositing now with these two separate Cinema 4D files. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is right now we're just seeing the wireframe version uh, since it's set to software uh, renderer, but we want to actually see uh, 
a draft version of the fully rendered thing. So now we actually see what we saw in our turntable lines Cinema 4D file, which is just these outlines. And we'll do the same thing with our turntable color here, and we'll just change this. Uh, so it was from, from uh, software, and we'll move it to standard draft. So now we actually see the flat color. And then what you want to do is you'll just multiply this layer, this lines layer, on top of the color layer. But you'll notice that our lines, if I change this back to normal mode, our lines are white and everything else is black. What we actually need to do is invert that so our lines are black and everything else is white. So the first thing I want to do is make this just a complete black and white image. Uh, because right now it has alpha and what I want to do eventually is apply an effect that will thicken the lines uh, of our cell renderer and our proximal shader so we can have a little bit more thickness and not th so thin lines. So the first step is to get rid of uh, the alpha on the line. So I'm just going to go to interpret footage main and then just ignore the alpha. And you'll see on the lines layer we now have just black and white. So the next thing we need to do is invert this and we can do this simply by using the invert effect and apply that. So that's applied after our Cineware layer so that's good. So we now have uh, black lines on a white background. So now if we do multiply you'll see we have our thin lines on top of our color layer. Cool. Now what if we want to thicken those lines? Now we're going to use a different effect that has a really fun name and I like to say it funny. It's called Minimax and we apply that to our turntable lines as well. Uh, but the thing is we'll want to apply this before the invert uh, effect here. So what it does is basically grows the image based on the color channel. So since we're dealing with black and white, we're growing the uh, black part of the channel there and thickening our edges. So uh, just a value of one is is pretty good. Once you go to two, uh, we kind of get some weird artifacting and stuff like that. So it's it's it'll thicken. Minimax will thicken, but it's also limited. Uh, so like I said, this this workflow isn't perfect, but it will get you. Uh, this line art style look uh, without too much fuss. So we have our uh, Cineware layer, our Minimax, uh, we have our Invert, and then multiply this Lines layer on top of the Color layer. So you can actually have a little bit of fun with this and say you want to uh, offset, uh, get this like kind of offset printing kind of look where the lines don't exactly match up with the color shapes and we can do that by just using like an offset command because if I actually move this Cinema 4D layer you'll see we get an issue with uh, Cineware so we can either apply an offset or we can pre-compose this Cinema 4D uh, layer and then move that composition but just just for the sake of simplicity I'll just use this offset and you can see that we're offsetting the lines a little bit there so we have this cool little offset where our lines are a bit offset, our colors are a bit offset, and that that's, could be a kind of artistic uh, little uh, treatment of your line art as well. So that's with offset. Uh, again, if you want to scale it up, I believe you can use a transform effect. So that will just apply, uh, you can apply a scale to all that to scale the whole entire line layer up. So you have a lot of flexibility here. So once you actually get your file the way you want it to, you would then change your uh, Cinema 4D. You want to see how these lines actually look, because right now they're really chunky. And there's two reasons for that. One of them being the uh, renderer is set to draft. So if you tra change that to final on both of these layers, that'll kind of smooth everything out. But the thing is, is that you're also... Uh, you also have low render settings in your Cinema 4D composition. So by default, if we go over to Cinema 4D Lite, you go to your anti-aliasing settings, they are by default set to the lowest settings possible. And that is geometry. Well, actually none is the lowest, but geometry is pretty cruddy too. Uh, so what you want to do before you render everything, so the workflow you need to you need to go through is making sure you you RAM preview everything, the animation looks good, 
uh, and everything looks ready to render. And then you, you crank up your render settings in After Effects in the Cineware layer. And then what you'll do before you render everything is make sure that your anti-aliasing is set uh, high enough uh, so you get nice crisp edges because that's kind of the uh, the look is that you made everything with like really crisp shape layers or vector art and you want to maintain that kind of feel in uh, <clears throat> using 3D. So to do that you're going to go and you're going to change the low anti-aliasing settings to best and then what you're going to do is, by default, this is set to min level and max level of 1x1 one one and 4x4. Four four. And this is basically how much anti-aliasing, uh, the threshold, basically how high it goes. So what I like to do is change the minimum level to 4x4, four four, uh, just so it's fairly high. And then you go to the filter, and this also adjusts the, the, the type of filter you use. So still image is pretty sharp, but I actually use uh, sync. Uh, that's just my preference uh, to get nice sharp edges uh, that goes with animation as well. Uh, and then what you'll do is once you change your anti-aliasing settings and crank them up a little bit, you're going to save. And then you're going to do the same thing in the turntables line uh, composition. Change it to best. Uh, I already changed this to 4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four, and then change this to sync as well, and then just save. Now the thing you have to keep in mind is now once you change those anti-aliasing settings to a higher value, it's going to take a lot longer to actually render via Cineware. And then you're going to see this thing cranking for a while. So the one thing uh, you really need to keep in mind is that this is just to preview like one frame and make sure that the anti-aliasing looks good. And once you check this one frame, then you just render. And I would recommend to not render uh, using Cineware because it's going to take a lot longer because you're not only rendering from Cinema 4D, but you're also rendering through this After Effects pipeline, which is going to slow it down. So what I recommend you do is you render both of these Cinema 4D uh, animations. So I would just go and just render, you know, go to your output settings, make sure you have all frames, and then just render to picture viewer as a quick time or whatever PNG sequence whatever you want to do and then import those files those rendered movies so you do that for the color uh, cinema 4d file in the lines uh, render these out and then import the quick time movies or sequences whatever and then just replace these cinema 4d uh, cineware layers and then since this is quite an easy setup uh, you can either just import the MOV files and just replace these two layers and make sure to turn off the Cineware layers because you don't need those anymore since you're dealing with movies. Or you just recreate the setup and just copy the effects onto a new composition with the, uh, with the rendered QuickTime movies. So that is how you, uh, the workflow that I would go through to create line art in Cinema 4D, uh, Cinema 4D Lite and uh, Cineware and After Effects, and hopefully uh, for those of you out there that are just new to Cinema 4D that this all made sense. If not, uh, please make sure that you, you know, if you have any questions, just hit me in the comments. I'll be, uh, I'll be watching them and, and helping you guys out. I know some of you might be very new to Cinema 4D, so I want to help you guys really learn and understand all this stuff. And, uh, and if you make anything, be sure to share that as well. Love to see what you guys are making out there. So, uh, hope this all made sense, and uh, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Later, guys.